How do you go to the bathroom? <laughs> Got up in front of a bunch of junior high, seventh graders, and was about to talk about the radio industry, and I said, boys and girls, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to put up your hands. Every kid in the audience shot their hands up, and I didn't know what to do. Never done a speech in my life. So I acknowledged a kid in the front row. He stood up and said, how do you go to the bathroom? <laughs> okay, that wasn't a broadcasting question. <laughs> that was a really good question. And I dare you to get it out of your heads for the next 15 minutes. <laughs> there was a school right across the street from our house in Yorkton, Saskatchewan, and, and I couldn't wait to go there. I just couldn't wait to go to that school. Principal just looks across his desk and says, hey folks, I'm sorry to tell you this, but he can't come here. So mom says, well, he needs to go to school. Where's that gonna happen? Oh, he needs to go across town to the school where crippled kids like him go. My mom looked at me and said, he's not crippled. The principal looked at my mom like there was something wrong with her too. Mrs. Law, he's got no arms. What do you call that? Mom went, Alvin. So the principal then says, this is the most important part of the story. He says, be that as it may, there's nothing I can do. Well, my mom started to cry. I just want to tell you that my mom taught me to use my feet. But I think the most important thing my mom did was allowed me to celebrate my difference. But I had a guidance counselor, and he said, Mr. Law, I think we know what your plan is. And I said, absolutely, sir. I'm going to be a rock star. And that was my plan. And I believed in it from the time that I was little, and I would tell everybody. He says, no, you're kind of ugly for television. But he said, you'd be great in radio. See, when that kid asked that question about going to the bathroom, I realized what I was actually doing, to be quite blunt about this. I was living in my own little cave in radio because society was not my favorite place because people would stare and people would look funny. And you can imagine that happens to me all the time. But the fact of the matter is it took me a special experience to absolutely understand how, how life actually works. That was the day that my son Vance was born. I was not prepared. I was kind of going through in my mind of what this was going to be like. And when he was 11 minutes old, they, they put him here. He fit here. I was having a lot of thoughts about what I could do. Could I be a dad? Could I take care of a child without arms? But this is the one that got me. I was 25 years old and in my lifetime I'd never actually once thought about what it must have felt like for my mom to hold me for the first time. My birth family simply gave me up. My mom, Hilda Law, was a foster mom who took me in and absolutely changed my life. And then it occurred to me, my mom was 55 years old and I was homeless. But I think the most important thing my mom did was allowed me to celebrate my difference. To not mourn having no arms, but to learn a very important lesson of gratitude and that is what we have is more important than what we don't. So it's not just about having a positive attitude, it's about the power of understanding that negativity is part of this too. But here's the most important thing I want to leave you with tonight. I did become a rock star. That is from the soundtrack of a music video that was shown at the opening ceremonies of the Rio Paralympic Games in 2016. This is representative of what the whole idea of how living the impossible means living what seemed impossible. Our dreams can come true, but we have to believe that it's possible. We need to believe more in this. We need to believe in ourselves more than anything. We need to say, yes, I can.